Yeah, so I've taken about a week off from the Bear Hawk construction, uh, headed into the mountains and did a bit of hiking. Uh, stayed a night in there actually and had a great time, but I'm back on, on task now and I've made some uh, reasonably good progress. So um, what I've been doing uh, the last couple of days is uh, mounting gas struts on the, on the front doors and probably tonight or tomorrow I'll, I'll mount the, back, the uh, rear cargo door gas struts as well. And then it's getting pretty close to actually having it ready to cover the, uh, the exterior. Um, today I've been installing the cable runs. So I'll give you a look at it. I've got, I've got it laid over on its side here. So it's just a lot easier to work, work on uh, the bottom. And so what I've done, if we uh, look up the front here, this um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to uh, see, to, to tell what you're looking at when it's on, on its side, but this is the, uh, the springs for the rudder pedal. So I've hooked them up. I've left, uh, put a cotter pin in one, but I've left one uh, without it so that I can adjust the controls um, prior to flight. Also installed the, uh, the flap cable there. It is uh, touching a little bit. There's a common uh, issue that a lot of builders have. When it's retracted, it touches on the mount for the, uh, the top of the, the gear shocks. So uh, my uh, friend and mentor Bob's coming around on Monday. We're gonna have a look at that and see whether we need to do anything about it. And if so, what the best uh, solution would be. This is the bell crank, the forward bell crank for the elevators. Uh, let's see if we can get a better view of that. A little bit difficult, but probably in there. Um, so I've just finished putting cotter pins in both sides. They're all connected up. I've got the turnbuckles left fairly loose there, and we'll adjust those much later. You can see also there's minimal clearance here. Um, if I zoom in from the flap cable, it's actually only in the flap retracted position because if I move the flap lever, you can see pretty quickly it, it gets adequate clearance in there. Um, so we're going to play around with that and have a look. I'm not too worried about it at this stage. I've installed the, uh, the lower um, pulleys into the belly. So I've got to get uh, into the belly. So there's three pulleys there. The cable orientation, I've checked it. They're all in the correct order. There's another, another pulley just down here. Um, and I've just put uh, cotter pins in them. I've, I've got to get my mentor to check those cotter pins and make sure that the size is going to be adequate. Uh, one thing that I did uh, last week is I beveled the edges on the fuselage stringers and I got that idea off Graham Johnson uh, who lives about half an hour from me. He's building a patrol and he had actually used a router. Uh, Graham's a bit smarter than me and he did this before he installed the, the stringers. I didn't. So anyway, quick work with an angle grinder and a sander and uh, the job is done. So I've also installed the uh, rudder cables today, the turnbuckles in there. I've put in all the fair leads. The fair leads, well the fair leads themselves are easy to get in. Um, what is not so easy is the actual um, retainer clips and I don't know whether you can see where my finger is there. That's the retainer clip on the fair lead. They're a bit of a pain to get in. Um, spent a lot of time doing that. So also put in the, uh, this is the uh, pitch uh, trim cables up here, running through fair leads and uh, all, all the way up to the front. I did make a slight mod, um, in fact if we come around here, made a slight modification um, to the trim, very very minor. I discovered that uh, on the underside there was a couple of washers up in here and they seemed to me to be quite large and what they're actually doing was pushing the chain up and off its track. This is a very easy solution. I took them out and I replaced them with smaller ones and now it works fine and the chain doesn't jump off its track. What I've done in here, um, when I made these up, I decided to forego the thimble that would normally go inside the wire here to spread the load. Now, I know a few other builders have done that. Um, it's not a recommended technique. And when I took the cables in for testing, the old chap that um, tested them commented on it, uh, not from the point of view of not having the thimble, but um, the fact that there's no pin through that chain link. He gave me a couple of appropriate size cotter pins and I've used those. It should be uh, plenty strong enough. The fact there's no thimble in there, I'm not too worried about because in full view, actually, it's not hidden behind panels or anything. I can see that. I can glance at it every 10 seconds if I want to and see if there's a problem developing, um, but I don't plan on doing that. So, um, yeah, last week I, I did also um, 
in between my trip into the mountains. I did a little bit more work up here. This is the skylight, if I zoom out, it's on its side. And I've modified the skylight quite a lot. I've taken the, the, uh, the top aluminium piece of the, of the two um, center stringers there, and I'm going to uh, locate them up here. In fact, let's see if I've got them here because it's a mod that might appeal to a number of builders. So let's think about this. This is the one here. Now, when the kit uh, arrives, you would normally see this riveted in place there. And that's designed to, to capture the lexin on both sides. And in the center piece, you would have uh, fabric. I've drilled those rivets out and removed the top piece. And what I'm going to do with that I've modified it, I've put plenty of cuts in it to give it some flexibility, and I'm going to use it on this outside former. Now, I've only got one hand here because I'm, I'm holding the phone while I'm videoing this, but trust me, it does bend very easily, and I'm going to rivet in place to retain the lexin on the sides, and I'm going to put one piece right across the top, and I think it will work very, very well. I'm very, uh, very happy with that. So what else have I done? Yeah, so what I've done is uh, I bought a bag of, um, what are they, uh, those, those stretchy things with hooks on their hands, and uh, I've, I've used those to retain all the cables in position. And uh, one of the things is when you cover the sides, you've got to be able to access all those cables. And I might actually, uh, I've got a really good idea from uh, one of my mentors, uh, Dave suggested that I um, fix a wire on the end of them. Um, now I'm just going to, I've got the, uh, the bear hawk sitting on its side, so let's just um, get back right now, just bear with me for a minute. So if I just roll this over. Okay, so that's... It's back right way up now, so it looks a bit more like a beer hawk fuselage. What I, what I want to show you is um, the gas straps on these doors. And that's, that's, my, uh, that's my main door. Really happy with those. The other thing is that when, it, when you're closing, it gets to about there, it's got an over-center uh, over lock on it. So it works really well. It actually holds itself closed. And then you only have to push it out about an inch and a half, and it goes up to the open position. What I've done is I've measured this angle so top of my, um, how to describe this, actually on the lower half of the doors, if I bring that up like that, you can see that there's a curve. It's a curve through there, it actually curves in two dimensions. What I've done is put a ruler across there and the open position is exactly horizontal. Now bearing in mind that the, the wing has got a one degree dihedral I think there should be a one degree clearance between the top of the door when it's opened and the bottom of the wing. I hope so anyway. Not too worried if it doesn't work out, um, but that's, that's working out really well there. And in here you can see the, the strut when it's all closed. So I just welded those into place yesterday. So that's all the progress so far. Um, yeah, getting some more enthusiasm for it. Tomorrow I need to put two mounts for the gas struts on the aft cargo doors and then I'm right ready to start covering the rear fuselage. Really looking forward to that. It'll go back over on, onto its side and, and we'll get underway. So I'll post another video once I've got something to report there. Cheers.